Welcome, thank you for joining me today. If you guys haven't caught up with my previous streams, then please do, they're on YouTube and uh, you can catch them uh, at, uh, at your convenience. As the here recommended me, thank you very much for, for taking the advice and joining us. So Patrick, welcome to you as well. Miguel, welcome to you. Wendy, welcome, welcome back. Um, I see there's quite a few people from the trading community here, so I'm good to, to see you guys back on again. Okay, again, uh, my name is Javid and I'm a trend trader. I've been trading since 2001. I've been a trend trader since 2003 and I pretty much spend most of my time either trading or away. I, I'm not a day trader. I've done day trading. I've done scalping. They haven't been successful for me at all. So I'm going to share with you some tips, three tips, uh, and this will hopefully help you improve your trading as well. So the first tip I want to share with you, and again, by all means, guys, if you have any questions, please ask them. Uh, what are your thoughts on binary trading real quick? Um, that's fine. There's no problem with binary trading. Uh, spread betting as well. Um, options. I think some people do options on here. That's fine. Um, where are you from? Nasha, I'm from the UK, just outside London. So to go on to the to point number one. Um, top tips for top tips rather for for traders. Uh, the first thing, and these are all based on my own personal experiences. And uh, my first point, I think I'd like to share with you guys is to stop using lower time frames. So if you trade on a fifteen minute time frame or a five minute time frame, even if you trade on a one hour time frame, I would suggest you go up a time frame or two. So in other words, if you're trading let's say a one hour time frame, you are pretty much glued to your screen throughout the course of the day. So in other words, every one hour, if not throughout the course of that one hour, at least once every hour, you need to come to your com computer screen and go to your charts. That in itself is a real pain because it means whatever you were doing, you've got to finish that or stop that and then come to your computer to actually check your charts. A one hour time frame was great when I first started because I thought, you know, this is actually not bad. I can do this once every hour. But if you're going to trade full time, and I'm not saying that you should go trading full time, but if you are going to trade full time, going to your screen every hour for the rest of your life is probably not a reasonable thing to do. If you are working nine to five, then you know you've got to be at work nine to five. If you are trading, you will not actually 24 times a day, Miguel says, yeah, quite right. If you are trading um, on an hourly basis, you've got to be committed to going to your screen every hour. So my suggestion, and this is again based on personal experience, stop trading the lower time frames. Go on to the higher time frames, and by doing that, you will also remove noise. You'll remove the indecision that's happening, the, the low, lower time frame noise, the market consolidation periods intraday. You will remove all of that. So let me just move this camera a little bit upwards, that's better. So my suggestion is go on to the daily time frame. Try trading on the daily time frame. You'll find that you'll have a lot less stress. You'll have more free time. And by trading on the daily time frame, it takes away all the intraday noise that you actually have. So first point is move up a time frame or two. If you're trading a one minute time frame or a five minute time frame, then I don't need to tell you but you're probably quite stressed during the course of the day. I, I've done a one minute time frame and I didn't do it very well either. Uh, I've done five minutes and I've done 15 minute time frames. One hour time frames were slightly better, but still when I moved over to daily time frames, they actually changed completely how I trade. I had a lot more free, free time. I could actually go out. I mean, in the last three months, we have probably been at home, I would say about a week. Most of the time, we have been away. And that's because we've been able to trade longer time frames. And most of the people on the trading community will be able to tell you the same thing. Like many of them work, some of them don't work. Miguel, for instance, um, he's a traveling trend trader. He tends to be traveling around. He does safaris. If you've caught his periscopes recently, you'll see that he was chasing after elephants. Actually, I think it was the other way around. The elephant was actually chasing him. Um, and, and that's actually quite true, by the way. But the fact is, he gets time to actually go away and not have to be stressed and sitting in front of his computer all day. So trade on a higher time frame, move up to a daily time frame, and you'll find it will change how you trade and how you progress. Uh, you're welcome, Miguel. 
Um, okay, so that's the first point I'd like to make. And again, it will change your, your lifestyle quite drastically as well. The, the second point is stop using one time frame. So if you trade, let's say as an example, a 15 minute time frame, and that's the only chart you look at, stop doing that. One time frame is not enough to tell you what's happening with that particular chart. It tells you what's happening at that moment on a 15 minute chart, but it will not tell you what's happening overall on that particular chart. So I'm going to use as an example the time frames that we tend to use in the Dynamic Trader community, which is the monthly, weekly, and daily. Now, the monthly time frame tends to give us a bit of information that we don't glean from the daily, not even so much on the weekly. The monthly time frame will tell us where our major support and resistance levels are, and it will also tell us where the, the high and the low and the close of last year was. Now, this bit of information is actually very useful because it tells us where the main reversal points will be. Compare that to a five minute chart. Let's say you draw in your support and resistance levels on a five minute time frame. You'll find that price may react around there somewhere, but it will fairly easily go through it in most cases. Unless that, time, um, that particular support or resistance level is compounded with a higher time frame support and resistance level at that same area, Five minute time frame support and resistance levels are fairly weak. But if you put that in contrast to a monthly time frame, a support or a resistance level on a monthly time frame, far, far stronger. And it's more likely to reverse or consolidate around those points than it is on the equivalent support resistance levels on a five minute time frame. So that's the first thing to look at. Stop using a one time frame chart and start looking at two or three, ideally three. So the monthly time frame is the largest time frame. That's the one that you want to start off with. You want to identify your support and resistance levels. You want to get an idea of what the trend is doing, whether it's being an uptrend or a downtrend, i.e. bullish or, or bearish. And once you've worked out what the kind of direction is and where the reversal zones are, you can move over to your weekly time frame. Now, the weekly time frame, as we went through yesterday, which was the bias, will give you a, a bullish or a bearish bias, but it will also tell you what the trend actually is. Now, this is very important. The weekly time frame is going to determine the direction of that trend, whether it's bullish or bearish. And if necessary, it could be in sideways consolidation. But in terms of talking about trends, the weekly time frame will tell you if you are in a bullish or a bearish trend. That is very, very important. Because you now have two pieces of information that is going to give you a big picture of what's going on with this chart. The monthly, it will give you a bit of an idea of a trend, but it's telling you where the actual support and resistance zones are. In other words, the reversal zones. The weekly, it's telling you what the bias is, but more importantly, it's telling you the trend direction. That is the time frame that is telling you which direction price is moving in. So now you've got the monthly and the weekly, the daily time frame is going to give you another piece of information. And what this will tell you is, is my trend on my daily time frame complying with the direction on the weekly time frame. In other words, are they in alignment? If the weekly is bullish, is the daily bullish? Just to add some information from yesterday, we spoke about the 200 period moving average, and that is going to give you the bias both on the daily and the weekly time frame. Now, assuming that the bias is bullish on both those time frames, so we've got a bullish trend, uh, sorry, bullish bias rather, on the weekly and on the daily time frame. Then what we need is for the daily time frame to be heading upwards. And generally we will identify that by a breakout. So if we're breaking through a resistance level, that's suggesting that the trend may now continue heading upwards. So the monthly is giving you a reversal zone, the weekly is giving you a trend, the daily is also telling you that the trend is heading upwards and you can enter on a daily time frame. Once you've entered, you then want to manage your trade. That is going to be point three, but just before we get on to point three, I just want to specify two things to you in regards to trading on the daily time frame. And again, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask them at any stage. If you're trading breakouts, and this is very important, if you're trading breakouts, and most of the people in the Diamond Trader community do trade breakouts, although 
many also trade pullbacks, but prefer breakouts. If you trade breakouts, you want the weekly trend and the daily trend to be in the same direction. They both have to be in the same direction. So if you're trading a breakout, the weekly and daily should be in alignment. If you are trading pullbacks, the weekly and daily should be in opposite directions. So in other words, let's say we have a bullish trend on the weekly time frame. You want the daily time frame to be pulling back. So you want to see a bearish trend near term, not long term. So you don't want to see a bearish trend that's been happening for the past six months. But short term, you want to see a bearish trend. That's giving you the information that we're having a pullback, but the overall trend, based on the weekly, is still heading upwards. So a breakouts, both time frames in the same direction. Pullbacks, both time frames in the opposite direction. That's very important because knowing that bit of information, which I know is fairly obvious and, and many of you will probably already know that, but we'll tend to lose sight of what's actually happening when we're looking at a chart. We'll tend to lose sight of what we should be doing or what the rules actually are when we're actually involved in a day-to-day -day basis of, of trading, especially if it's lower time frame. So knowing that bit of information will actually give you the edge when you're looking at trading. If you're trading breakouts, you want the same direction on both time frames, both time frames. If you're trading pullbacks, you want the opposite direction on both time frames. Okay, last of all, we're going to move on to management. And while I'm not going to go into great detail at this moment in time in terms of how to manage trades, there are two main ways of trading. Um, stuff like your question is, what advice do you have to new Forex traders? We did this two days ago, actually, Safwat, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, in regards to, to new traders. And what I would advise you, please, is to, to go on to the, the YouTube channel and just watch the Periscope from two days ago. Uh, by all means, you can contact me, direct message me on Twitter, um, or send me a public message, and I'll give you the link for that if you wish. But we did go into quite some detail about advice for new traders. No, no need to apologise, that's fine. Um, and, and there's no problem, no problem with asking that question, but instead of me answering it for you now, which won't be very detailed, it is a lot more detailed in the, the video we did two days ago. So going back to, to point three, we want to use a form of management, and there's two types. There's you take a target, or there's you trail your stop loss. As trend traders, we tend to trail our stop loss. We allow the trends to run. Many trades can run for, for many months. I mean, we had some trades that, um, I think it was a Euro dollar last year, started around September time and finished around, was it March? Um, somewhere along those lines. The direct traders will know exactly the, the dates I'm referring to. But September to March, so what are we talking about? September, October, November, December, January, February, March. So about seven or eight months that trade went on for. And of course, we added to those positions as well. So. The way we did that is by using a stop loss that trails price action. If you are trading and you take a target, so in other words, if you exit once you hit, let's say, 2R, which is two times your actual risk, then you could potentially miss out on a prolonged trend, so in other words, a continuation. If you go the other route, which is what most of us will do, and you take a trade, and you do not take a target, but you allow that trade to run, you allow it to unfold, then you can manage your position while the trend is continuing, you lock in more and more of the actual profit. And the only time you exit is when it actually hits your trailing stop loss. That is going to be quite difficult for many people to use. And many that have joined from previous trading, joined our community, who then started to use this style of trading, and, and trade management rather, have initially found it quite difficult. But once you have just a few good trends that go on for a few weeks or months, and you can see the, the profits compounded, it's a lot easier to trade that way. Trading in itself is not easy, so the term easy is probably a little bit dubious to use, but in terms of trading with a target and trading with a exit management, the exit management is far superior. It does depend on your style of trading, but I am talking about trend trading. I'm talking about longer term trading. I'm not talking about trading on a one minute time frame or a five minute time frame. Uh, where can we learn how to manage exit management? Um, Lena 
I'm hopefully I pronounced that name correctly. I will be going into exit management uh, and portfolios as well in future periscopes. So please follow me, and I will go through that uh, as as we go on uh, during the series. So I'm going to give you two types of opportunities or two types of styles, if you like, when you have a trailing stop loss, either to use a tight stop loss or to use a, a loose stop loss, a wide stop loss. More often than not, we will opt for the wider stop loss. Now, when I say tight stop loss, I suppose that it's depending on what you consider tight. I'm not talking about if we talk about the foreign exchange, 10, 20, 30 pips. I'm not talking about that. A, a tight stop loss could be a few hundred pips. A wide stop loss could be maybe four or five hundred pips. But when we have a good trend, and by a good trend I'm referring to neat linear move. So in other words, not a, a haphazard trend, but one that is very neat, a speeding driver I refer to them as. When we have a speeding driver trend that's moving very quickly, then we can use a wider stop loss. Why do we want to use a wider stop loss? Because if we've got a good trend in place, we do not want it to exit prematurely. So we can use a wider stop loss. And also, if we have a good trend in place, and by that I mean a very neat linear trend, if we have a good trend in place, we can trust the trend to continue. So a wide stop loss is actually more beneficial than a tight stop loss. Because if you have a tight stop loss in place and a good trend, and you have the smallest of pullbacks, the trade will exit. And unfortunately, more often than not, if it was a good trend, that small pullback is just a small pullback. It exited your trade before it continued heading in the direction you were trading in. And what will happen is you have missed out on that additional profit. And again, that, while it's frustrating, what's even worse is jumping in at the tail end of that trend because you're missing out. The fear of missing out, FOMO, is probably one of the biggest downfalls for traders. They're looking at a trade, they're looking at a trade, they're looking at a trade, and it's going in the direction they want it to go in, but they're not trading it. Finally, fear of missing out, they enter that trade only to find the moment they enter the trade, it pulls back and stops them out for a loss. Then, shortly after, it'll continue in the direction that the trade was going in. And this is a, a reoccurrence that happens again and again and again. This is a different periscope that we'll talk about. We'll talk about breathers and chart patterns such as flag formations. But the easiest way to remove all of those situations, the easiest way to allow a trend to continue without having to worry about it on a day-to-day -day basis or without being stressed out about it, is to use a wider stop loss. I know that it's very difficult for some of you to actually even contemplate, but trust me, I've been through the hard parts. I've done scalping, I've done day trading, I've used really small stop losses, I've lost money, I've made a bit of money, I end up being flat after six months, you know, I haven't made any money, I haven't lost any money. Well, I did lose money and I did make money and kind of evened itself out. But overall, what I have found is in trading, allowing the trends to continue in the long term is far better than actually being involved and trying to play the market intraday and intricately. Trying to time the market is very difficult to do. And trust me, I know many people will say that they can time the market on the intraday time frame. Yet, yeah, I suppose some people can time the market, but most of us will not be able to do that. Uh, Frank, your question is how wide? I think you're referring to the stop loss. What we go by a certain set of calculations. We use average true range to identify our wide stop losses. Um, Again, I can't go into detail about that today because the topic isn't regarding that. But basically, if you're using a stop loss, you know, ATR multiplied by two would be a good opportunity. Will you post all periscopes on your YouTube channel? Not all of them. Unfortunately, yesterday's one had technical issues. I did manage to retrieve it and get it onto YouTube, but not all of them will be posted on. So I would recommend that you actually join live so as that you don't miss out. But I'll be doing a periscope almost daily for the next few weeks, maybe even a month, uh, and going through all the points that I think that are relevant. And bear in mind, I've been trading since 2001, and my first couple of years was really disastrous. I haven't worked since 2001. In other words, I haven't been employed. And my trading, I started full-time back in 2001. Not out of choice, but out of situation that I was thrown into doing this full-time. 
and my first couple of years were very, very difficult and very hard. Now it's it's a lot different, and I I hardly look at my trades. I mean, the Diamond Trader community. And by the way, how many of you on here today are actually from TRC? Could you just put in me or uh, put a thumbs up if you can um, put that onto your screen, please, on your phone, to let me know. Uh, and those of us on the, the trading community will be aware that trading actually longer term is quite easy compared to shorter term. Um, Cola, Miguel, um, Pusanaj, I'm not sure who that is, online trader, which is Sanjay, um, Yasmin, Wendy, okay, there's a few of you, James, um, there's a few of you who are on. So these guys who have just put their names up, they will probably all be able to tell you who so. Um, they'll be able to tell you that trading longer term is far, I, I use the word easy and that's wrong, it's far simpler than to trade shorter term. Um, almost most people, if, if not everyone works, a uh, few people do not work and they trade full time, the others do work, but either way it allows time for everyone to enjoy during the course of the day. Um, we've been at the Savoy in, in London four times in the last three weeks and we've been away in Europe three times in the last month and a half. Uh, Mikhail says an understatement. I, I don't know the exact number of times, but we've been there quite a few times. We've been to Dorchester, and we tend to go out quite often. The point I'm making is that we've been away more times than we've been at home. And that is not possible when you're actually watching the screen all day. If you are trading longer term, it is actually far easier to enjoy a better lifestyle. You're not stressed, you're not worrying about this computer screen, you're, sorry, you're not looking at the computer screen and worried about your charts all the time. You can actually have a much more relaxing time while still making money. Allowing the trends to continue, you could be asleep, a trend could be continuing if you're doing foreign exchange and second 24 hours a day. A trend could be continuing while you're sleeping and by the time you've woken up, you've had more profit than you had last night. And all you did was sleep. If you were day trading or scalping, you're probably awake during that period of time. If not worried, you're looking at the charts. So the, the purpose of today's scope was just to give you three tips that will change the way you trade based on what has happened to me. I've been through these situations and while I didn't necessarily learn the, all these points myself, I've, I've learned them from different courses and, and mentors that I had. When I put it all together, I should have done it in the first place, but I didn't. So I'm sharing this information with you, and I'm hopefully you guys will do the same and, and go through a period of moving over from short-term trading to longer-term trading. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments even, by, by all means, feel free to, to send me a direct message on Twitter or a public message if you prefer, or you can email me uh, through our website. And... Whichever you prefer, I don't mind, I will answer you back. Um, Brian, thank you for the invaluable advice. Thank you very much for your comments, I appreciate that. So again, um, please bear in mind the, the points that I've covered today. I will be doing a Periscope on a daily basis for the next few weeks, maybe even a month, um, and each one of them will be hopefully giving you more help and advice on trading and how to improve your trading. Uh, so please do add me if you haven't already done so. Uh, the number at the bottom right is 27. Um, if you click on that and just add me, and then you'll be alerted when I, I next do my scope. Nikki, thank you very much for, for your help, uh, sorry, for your comments. Uh, looking forward to the next session. Um, me too, actually. Uh, thank you very much. Um, excellent again, Javid. Thank you very much, Kian. Is that Kian? The name's just gone. Um, 4,300 hearts, hearts, sorry, hearts, easy. Um, I haven't checked that. I'll check in a moment. Um, Miguel, thank you very much as well. Okay, guys, thank you very much for, for your time this evening. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you all on here tomorrow. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me via Twitter. All right, guys, thank you. Have a good evening or morning or afternoon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.